Do you know that feeling when you drag some script onto an object and you get straight into testing, but after a while you are getting tons of no reference exceptions? Then you probably also go into the code trying to figure out why it doesn't work. And as you take a look into the inspector, you notice that you forgot to assign some variable. I think that everyone knows this, and to prevent it from happening, we will create our own custom required attribute, so that when we forget to assign some reference in the inspector, it's going to throw us an error in the console, so it will tell us where we need to assign something, and it also won't allow us to play the game. So this way, we never forget to assign the references which are marked with the required attribute. Let's start with the attribute itself, so I will create new script for that. To make class an attribute, we surprisingly have to inherit it from attribute, which is stored inside of the system namespace. For some attributes that should not be modifying anything in the inspector, it is okay to use the classic attribute class, but if you want to create some attribute that will have some custom editor or some property drawer, so we will somehow be changing how we can perceive the variable in the inspector, you should not be inheriting from the classic attribute, instead we will use the property attribute. And this one is stored inside of the Unity Engine namespace, so it has some additional functionality related to Unity Engine. And creating attributes is really this simple, now I will create some testing script. So now you can see that we can use the required attribute to mark any variable as required. But we don't want to be using the required attribute on let's say classes, enums, we only want to use it for the fields. So for this we can add an attribute to the attribute, which will define the attribute usage. And you can see that we can select let's say only the classes or constructors, enums, events. In this case we can simply use a field. And then we also have some additional parameters, whether we want to allow multiple of the same attributes for one field in this case. But these two parameters are optional, the main is the first one. So now if someone would want to mark a class with the required attribute, we can see that it's going to give us an error. And you may notice that some attributes actually have parameters such as the header into which you can input some string. So for the required attribute it would be useful if you could specify that when the reference is not set in the inspector, it's either going to pause the game when you try playing or it's not going to pause it. For this I have a simple enum. And the attribute is either going to only show some warning in the inspector or it's actually not even going to allow us to play the game. So those are two types of the required attribute that we can have. And to add the parameters into the attribute when we are creating it, we can simply create a constructor for it. So from default, the warning type is going to be the error, which is the most strict. Otherwise, we can simply set it. So as we are adding the attribute, we are not getting any errors. But if we want, we can also specify the warning type to be the inspector warning. So this is it for the attribute that was pretty simple. Next we are going to make a custom property drawer so that when the variable is marked as required and we forget to assign it is going to show us some warning here in the inspector. If you are new to property drawers or editor scripting I also have some tutorials on this topic so check it out. First we'll have to create the editor folder inside of which we can create the script. So this script is going to be inheriting from the property drawer and it's going to be a custom property drawer of the required attribute. We are going to override the function on GUI, which is triggered when we move our mouse over the inspector or when the inspector should just update. So here we are taking input for the position, for the property, we are trying to serialize and for the label. Then we can simply just draw the property field, because if you wouldn't have this line here, then this is already overriding how the inspector looks, so it wouldn't actually even show the basic field where we could assign the variable. So we need to first draw the property field using the editor GUI class. And then we want to show the warning only if the type of the property is some object reference. Because if it is just a value, some number, then we obviously don't know when we should show the warning. So only if it is some reference we want to show it. And at the same time, the reference value has to be equal to null. Then I'm simply drawing some space so that we have a little bit more space in the inspector. Then we can get the rect, which is pretty much the position and the width and the height of the warning rect. So the warning we are going to draw in the inspector. And then we can use the handy function help box, which is going to draw the warning box for us. We just need to give it the rect, so the position, the scale, then some text and also the message type, so in this case it is the error. 
And this is really it for the property drawer, it is that simple. So this will make it that when we forget to assign it, it's going to show us the warning in the inspector. So let's check that. So as we take a look into the attribute testing, we can see that we have the little warning here saying that this field is required because we didn't assign any value to it. And if I drag something there, you will see that it disappears. So this is already a great improvement. We can set some variables as required and we see the warning in the inspector, but still we can play the game and we are going to notice that we forgot to assign something only when we actually get the error. So let's take a look at the last script, which is going to check if all of the required fields have some value assigned and if there is even one field that is not assigned, it won't allow us to play the game. This script will also be placed inside of the editor folder because there will be some editor related logic, so let's create that. The required fields validator class is going to be static because we really only need one validator, we don't need more of them. It's also not going to be a mono behavior because it's kind of unnecessary for it to be somewhere in the scene. It can be really just static. And from somewhere we need to call some function inside of this class which is then going to be checking for all of the required fields. So the way that we can do this is using the constructor which I will make only private because we are not really going to be calling it from anywhere else. At the first glance it may seem that the constructor is never going to be called. But it's actually called at the first time that you open Unity or when all of these scripts recompile, it's going to call the static constructor, which is really all that we need. We need it to run only once and then simply assign some listener so that when we click the play button, it's going to check for all of the required fields. So we can use the handy function inside of the editor application class, which is called play mode state changed. So when the play mode state changes, we want to check if we are exiting the edit mode because that's really when we click the play button, so we are going into the play mode. If that is the case, then we can simply run the function debug warnings, which is going to go through all of the mono behaviors, check their fields, and if we find some missing, we are going to stop the game. So for the debug warnings function, this one should store some boolean, but we should pause the game, which will be set to true if we find some missing reference. Then we are going to get all of the mono behaviors from the scene using the find objects of type. You could say that this is not going to be performant, which is true, but this logic is only going to run for the editor, it's not going to run for the build of the game, and it's only going to run once when we play the game. Later I will also show you that the performance impact is not going to be big at all. I have tried it with 1000 mono behaviors and it still run the game pretty much instantly. Anyways, once we have all of the mono behaviors, we are going to be looping through all of them to check for their fields. In this part, we will be using some reflection, so if you are not sure what all of these variables and these functions mean, I really suggest you to check my tutorial about reflection. So as we are looping through all of the mono behaviors, we are also going to be getting all of the fields. Once we have them, we will again be looping through all of the fields, and then we can check if the field has the required attribute. If it has the attribute, then we are going to get the field value. Again, we can just get the value from the field. And if the value of the field is null, here it is important that we use the dot equals null. Because if you would simply check if it is equals equals to null, in this case, it wasn't really working well for me because there is a difference between the equals equals null and the equals function. The dot equals function is going to work really in any case, it works perfectly, but with the double equals, sometimes it may not work. So if you want to be 100% sure that it's going to work, you have to use the dot equals. So if the value of the field is now, and we actually want to be warned, so we set the warning type inside of the attribute to error, which means that we want to get the error, then we can simply log the error in the console, and we are also going to say that we should pause the game. And if we should pause the game, then we can exit the play mode, which is just going to stop the game. It may seem like we have written quite a lot of code, which is true, but we only really need to write it once. And you can even create your own utility library from this, so that you can simply import it into your next projects, and you don't have to be writing any of this code. And to make the required attributes work on the fields, you don't really need to call any function, you don't need to create any instance, the only thing you need to do is to add the attribute to some variable and it's going to do all the job for you. So back in Unity, I haven't assigned anything to the variable, you can see this empty, we are getting the warning here, 
and if we try to play the game it doesn't even play it and in the console we can see it's giving us an error saying that the field testing variable is required and when we click it it will also tell us on which object the variable is required so this way this is really simple for us to find which variables we need to assign and if you are still worried about the performance because we are actually going through all of the mono behaviors in the scene i have added few more variables into the attributes testing script so now i have 10 of them i will leave only one unassigned and i'm going to create 10 copies of this one and i didn't create just 10 copies that would be too little i've created 1000 so we have 1000 tests below each one of these we have 100 then we have 10 and all these are really the copies so let's try playing it and we'll see the performance it took it like 0.5 seconds or maybe one second and we can see that we have gotten 1000 debug that logs which is the right amount we can try it again so i'm clicking now and it took it like one second to check all these 1000 mono behaviors where each one of them has 10 variables so in total it should be able to check 10,000 fields in i don't know 0.5 seconds on my machine and if i still want to be able to play the game even when i have not assigned the reference we can simply go into the script and i will do it only for the variable 5 which i haven't assigned then for this one we can simply use the constructor for the required attribute and we can specify the warning type to be only the inspector warning so now even though we have 1000 unassigned variables they should not give us errors and it should allow us to play the game, which we can see indeed works. The required attribute also comes with the Odin Inspector, which is pretty popular, kind of advanced inspector for Unity, which you can find on the Asset Store, but that one is paid, so I was wondering whether I could create the attribute on my own, because it happens to me quite often that I forget to assign something, I get into testing, and only after a while of testing I notice that I forgot to assign it, so then it's quite annoying to be going back and forth between the game and the scene. So this lets you know right from the start whether you have assigned everything or not. I would definitely suggest you to write something similar or even copy my code, put it into some folder on your PC, and then every project that you create you can simply put the folder there and you are going to have everything working, you can use the required attribute anywhere and you don't have to write any additional code. You can see that creating your own custom tools that will make your life easier can take some time. For me it took definitely a few hours to come up with all of this code, but then once you have it done you can reuse it really anywhere and it can save you a lot of time. If you want to see some extra more in-depth tutorials from me, check out my Patreon where I'm releasing some longer tutorials and if you have any ideas for what you would want to see there, definitely let me know down in the comments. Anyways, I hope that this video was useful. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can also leave them down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye!